Hi, I'm Brian Sather, and in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at building out an exploded view and an assembly animation using the presentation environment in Autodesk Inventor. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to point out is the storyboard panel here on the bottom of the screen. This is where everything is going to be recorded. It's primarily for recording the placement of components as they're moved, but it can also include the camera position or component visibility and transparency too. Now, before we create the exploded view, we need to do a little setup. So to do this, move the playhead into the scratch zone here on the left side of the timeline. When the playhead's here, nothing is going to be recorded. So if we wanted to exclude the main PCB from the exploded view entirely, we can select it along with all the screws holding it in place and then turn off visibility. This is also where we set the initial camera position. So just simply orient the model to the standard isometric position and then click capture camera. So now that we've done that, we can get started on actually creating the exploded view. Before we do anything, make sure to move the playhead to zero seconds by dragging it into the timeline and then clicking this back to storyboard beginning button. Now to actually move some stuff around, we're gonna use the tweak components command. I'm going to start with the main projector assembly here in the middle, and I usually find it a bit easier to move the screws first, then the component and the screws all together to their final location. Now once I got them selected here, you'll notice that this triad appears on the screen. Just grab that arrow pointing up and you can move the screws around. Before we lock these in, I want to point out a few different options here in the tweak command though. The first being trail lines. You can set these up so trail lines are shown for every part, every component, and what that's going to do is consolidate the sub-assemblies into a single trail line. You can do just a single line for the entire group of parts that you selected, or you can just turn them off like I did here. The other option is the duration, and this is going to define how long that move is going to play down here in the storyboard. I'd like for this to play relatively fast, so I'm going to set it at one and a half seconds. And with those settings completed, let's just go ahead and put in a precise value for the move at 50 millimeters and then hit enter. Now next up we're going to move the projector and the screws together. So I'm going to again go over here and grab the screws from the model browser. And in order to grab the projector subassembly in the window, I'm going to change the selection option up here from part to component, and then I'm going to grab the projector. Now again, let's just grab that vertical arrow on the triad and move it up. And it looks like I missed one of the screws down here, so I'm going to click the Add Remove Components button, and then grab that screw and type 200 millimeters in the dimension box. Now another way to handle this if you've already completed the command is at the bottom of the model browser is a folder containing all the tweaks you've created. So, and you can edit anything in here to change the dimension, adjust trail lines, or add or remove components at any time. So now we have a bit of an issue with the view. Uh, the projector is beyond the extents of the window. So I'm going to go ahead and reset to my home view. Then I'm going to hit capture camera. And you'll notice down here in the storyboard, it adds a camera movement from the previous position to where it's at now. So we've always got a best view of what's going on, and it's actually going to play that move in the storyboard when we play it. So now we can go ahead and finish placing all the different components. I'm going to do this pretty quickly. Uh, the fan screws first are going to go up 50 millimeters. Then the fans and the fan screws together go up another 150 millimeters. Grab the control panel screws and bump those up 25 millimeters, and then pull the control panel and those screws up and out 100 millimeters each. And finally, we'll go ahead and move the rear PCB screws and then the group of them up and out the same 100 millimeters. So now we've got our full exploded view, and here's where the storyboard actually gets pretty cool. You can adjust the length or order of any of the steps in the process. So, for example, if you want to move the rear PCB at the same time as the control panel, just grab those steps and move them over. And if you want to shorten anything, you can just grab the extents of the box here and resize it. And once you're happy with all this, you can go ahead and hit play, or in our case, I'm going to hit reverse play to actually see the assembly process rather than the exploded view. You can also come up here and hit the publish video button in the ribbon to export this out as a WMV 
or an AVI file that you can share with whomever might be interested in it. All right, now there's one more panel here in the presentation environment that we haven't touched yet, and that's used for creating static snapshots of the model. The first one I want to create is one of the final exploded view. So we're going to grab the playhead and move it to the end of the timeline, and then we'll use the new snapshot command to create it. When you do it like this, it's associative to the storyboard. So if anything changes in the timeline, that snapshot's going to update as well. And you can move the playhead to different points on the timeline and create snapshots if you want to build step-by-step -step instructions. And you'll notice that each snapshot has a little marker here in the timeline that can be moved around to adjust what it's going to show. You also have the option to create snapshots that are not linked to the storyboard at all. Just move the playhead into the scratch zone, adjust the model however you'd like, and then create this new snapshot. Now these can be used in a couple different ways. You can publish them out as images if you want to use them in assembly instructions or tech pubs, or you can send it out as a drawing view. Once it's placed in there, we can add our annotations or we can add parts lists and balloons and things that you would normally add to a exploded view. So there you have it, creating exploded views and assembly animations using the assembly environment inside of Autodesk Inventor. I'm Brian Sather. Thanks for watching.